Welcome learners in our today's lesson and basically today we are going to look at components components of management information system components as elements or parts or what makes up an information system we say these are system and it has independent components which must work together so that the system can achieve its objectives so component number one is people people number two is data software hardware then you have telecommunication telecommunication is same as network telecommunication is same as network then we can have num this number one two three four five we can add procedures procedures so these are what makes up what we call an information system so based on that we can come up with a diagram we can come up with a diagram that illustrates the components of mis we put mis at the center we can put data as a component we can put what we call procedures procedures we can put hardware we can put software we can put telecommunication or networks networks so i want us to start with data data as a component so basically data is now the raw material of management information system and data can be acquired from the external environment it can be in terms of what we call customers buying patterns we want to see how customers prefer to buy items what do they base on in terms of age in terms of preferences in terms of tests then we acquire that data we can now enter the data into a computer so the computer has a bleed to organize that data in an organized manner because we are not going to base on data of one customer we are going to base on data on so many customers so we end up with large volumes of data so the data is entered in a system and the system organizes that data in form what we call database database so a database basically is an organized storage of data in the computer memory in a manner in which it allows easy retrieval easy access and management or manipulation on data so data mining means acquiring data or from the external environment putting it in an orderly manner and allowing systems to perform certain activities like retrieving addition manipulation or updating or modifying in a more efficient manner then we can look at procedures each and every firm must have what you call procedures and the procedures of a firm are written from of standard operating procedures these ones basically will guide people will guide the employees on how to they use how to use these particular information systems because we are saying this system is an important resource of a given firm not all firms can afford to have management information systems because i say management information systems are in terms of computer systems that offer a firm with information which is needed in making decisions so not all firms can afford so these are an important resource of a given firm so people if they misuse it it means someone can steal data someone can steal the hardware devices of this system someone can interfere with the software part of this system so procedures are basically laid down policies guidelines that defines how the resources of mis are going to be utilized and remember we have a farm and a farm must always have branches a farm must have what you call departments and each and every department has a right to access and utilize the management information system so the work of procedures defines how each and every individual each and every personnel each and every department functional area has access to this particular information system so we are saying there are policies regulations procedures that guide users on how they utilize 
the resources of a management information system. So they are put in a way that they take long to change. So for example, they can take five years to change. So there are not standard operating procedures. Each and every time the employee logs in, it means you have to obey. Once you are in the work promise, you have to obey those particular procedures. We perform activities based on those procedures. So the honors procedure without procedures it means the system can have challenges. People can misuse the system resources. The system cannot work efficiently. We can have one user using the system uh, in a more unfamiliar way and ma mainly that user can even tamper in terms of sabotage. Someone can just delete certain data, someone can just steal certain data as a resource, someone can steal a hardware. So we are saying the procedures will outline how the management information system resources are going to be accessible to users of a given farm. Then you can move to hardware. So basically hardware are the physical components, the ones we can touch, the ones we can see, which makes up information system. They are the physical components that make up information system. These components are important because without them it means the system cannot work. So the functions performed by a given management information system. We say that one is inputting and then processing because the system that behave like a computer, so their functions are the same like that of a computer. We have storing, then outputting or sharing information. So there are hardware devices that allows us to acquire data from customers or from any external environment to a given farm. Uh, we have hardware devices that allows us to convert that data into meaningful information. So things like keyboard, we can come up with what you call different ways of acquiring data. We can have what you call processors that can convert data into information. We have what you call storage capabilities or devices that allows the system to store information for a long period of time. Then last you have output component. These are hardware devices that allows or enables the system to disseminate information to the external environment. So basically we are saying the component of a mice which falls on hardware is that element that you can see and touch. And this element enables a hardware device to perform a given task. Ah, we can move to what you call software. So because we normally compare this system with a human being, and a human being you cannot solve a problem or perform a task without knowledge. So you need knowledge for you to use your physical features to perform a given task or use your physical features to solve a given problem. For example, if I give you a problem and say add for me to one, four and seven, you solve that problem of adding four and seven. So it means if you don't have any basic mathematical knowledge, you cannot solve this problem. So you acquire knowledge through a process known as learning. You can also acquire knowledge through a process known as experience. You go through an, ex an activity, an event, or something, then you learn from that. You acquire some knowledge or you are taught through a learning process. So basically now these systems would acquire knowledge through a process known as programming. So programming is a process by which we have people known as programmers who are meant to come up with knowledge, software, programs that will guide the physical devices of a management information system in performing certain activities. So we are saying software is basically instructions, programs that guide the hardware devices of this system in solving a given problem, in coming up with information, in empowering managers with information. Hi, we have a variety of software. We have classes of software. One, we can have what you call communication software. And this communication software, these basically are programs that facilitate to enable the system to share. Because we say we can have a farm which may have uh, branches. We can have a farm that must have departments. So if information is in one department, they may share with that another department. If you have information in one branch, we can share with another branch using communication software via communication devices or telecommunication devices. 
Another example for software is known as what you call basically communication software is an example of application software. Application software. These are programs that are meant to enable the users of this system to solve their problems. And these users are known as end users. Known as end users. End users are the ones that relies on information. So they need these particular uh, programs for them to come up with tasks. For example, office automation. And office automation basically is the activity of automating activities, tasks that take place in an office, and their basic activities. Each and every office must have what you call keeping records. Another one is communication, passing information to customers. So we can have programs that enables people in that office to come up with information and share in a more convenient, reliable, and easy way to customers. In among in storing information, we can have an organized form of storing data in an organized manner in form of what you call a database. So they are known as what you call application programs. They enable the end user to solve their problems using the components, using the hardware devices of these particular systems. An example is a communication software. An example is what you call word processors. Word processors allows users basically to what you call come up with documents in the form of text, make them attractive and print or display in what you call paper or stationery for printing them. Then another example of software is what you call operating system. So operating system is a class of software that manages the hardware devices of a computer, the hardware devices of this particular system. Because we are saying the system will have a class of a variety of devices. One is input devices, another one is storage devices. We have processor, we have the output devices. Each and every device performs a given task. So we need a software that will manage these devices, assigning them tasks, uh, looking at their working conditions of each and every device monitoring how they are working. So with that software is known as operating system. So operating system is a class of software that is meant to enable or manage the hardware devices of this particular system. Then we move to networks. So network means interconnection of computers. We have network and internet. Interconnection of computers within a limited geographical location within a city, within a town, or within, let's say, a building or a floor, is known as a network. But if we choose to interconnect computers all over the world, we form what we call internet. So we are saying most of the farms, we can have a farm which has branches all over the world. We can have a farm which has branches in other countries, in other cities. So they may wish to share information with other branches or those other branches. We can have a farm serving customers all over the world having suppliers all over the world. So it means this firm must be able to communicate to those suppliers, must be able to communicate to those customers. So there is what you call telecommunication a capability or devices to pass information between departments, between functional areas, between uh, branches, between customers, suppliers, etc. So we are saying Basically, an interconnection of computers facilitates the element of communication. The last you have what you call people. So people, people is another component of this system. People is someone who would use, who require this system. And we also have a variety of people. One, they are as end users. End users are basically employees that are going to rely on this system to enter data, they are going to rely on this system to acquire information and use it in making choices. We have also a class of people that are meant to manage this system. And in under management, because this system will be in terms of database, they require a variety of data stored in an organized manner, we have database administrators. Those are people who are cap capable of setting up a database and being able to manage, administer that given database. We are saying that the management information system has the element of networks. The system can work in a variety of systems. It can communicate with another system. It can exchange or share data with another system. We can have a system in department of marketing which is differently or works in a different manner 
in the department of ICT. But the two systems must communicate. So we are saying we have an element of telecommunication. So the people who will be able to set up that telecommunication structure, architecture, or let's say network, the owners network administrators. And whenever this system fails, it means that the people are concerned in maintaining and ensuring that system doesn't fail, is able to serve or enable users, enable departments or branches to be able to share information. Then you have users who are able to maintain the hardware devices, that are as computer maintenance or what you call technicians. They are able to maintain the hardware devices of the system by performing maintenance activities like cleaning the systems. If we look at input devices, we can have a typing device like a keyboard. At this keyboard, if we don't clean the keyboard frequently, if we have dust particles accumulating within the keys, it can now make that keyboard not to function. So computer technician is an example of a user or people, which is an element of management information system that allows uh, the system to work efficiently, effectively, by basically performing some activities so that the system keeps on working. So these are examples of resources and the resources are basically what you call the elements of a, a system. Now from there you can look at the role of information in a given farm. The role, the importance, the uses of information in a given farm. So basically information allows a business farm to make informed decisions by presenting data. Once the system gives us data in form of information, in a way that is easy to interpret and manage. It means if the information is in the, in the context of a customer, in terms of what you call surrounding the client, basically based on the client performance or client preferences, uh, what you call tests, we can based on it to make a what you call informed decision. Another one is improved processing. These systems comes up with information that facilitate easy activity being performed. We have employees and these employees, whenever they are given knowledge, it means they can easily perform certain activities. We have a department known as knowledge work level in a given firm and this knowledge work level has knowledge workers and data workers. The main aim is basically to come up with knowledge and this knowledge is used to in improve on the quality of services, improve on the quality of products that a given firm is going to basically do what you call as provide. Another function of information is basically to allow a given firm and perform primary activities. Primary activities. Primary activities basically are functions that are directly related or they have an impact on the creation of a product, on the creation of a service. The goal of this primary activity is basically to add more value on that given product and reduce on cost. One of it is what you call inbound logistics. Inbound logistics. This is now looking at the cost in bringing in raw materials. Bringing in raw materials and any other input which is needed. So information can be used here to make these processes more efficient such as supply chain management systems. These supply chain management systems can allow the suppliers to manage their own inventory. Then another activity that falls under inbound logistics is basically operations. So operations is basically the activity of converting the raw materials into final products or services from manufacturing to business process management. Another is outbound logistics and basically these are functions required to get a product out to the customer. How can we make our product be available to the customer? We have what you call outbound logistics. So we have information, it can enable us to improve on processes such as allowing real-time inventory checks. We can even look at what you call sales and marketing. These are activities that make information about the products and services you're offering readily available to customers. Now. Basically, we have what you call support activities. Information can also allow us to perform support activities like farm infrastructure. We can improve on the performance of each and every 
infrastructure in terms of inventory we can look at finance we can look at what you call accounting we can measure quality in those systems we can look at human resource management using basing on the information we can look at the information or the need of employees what these employees need it is about recruiting it's about hiring coming up with other services we can add basing on information so that marks the end of our lesson.